Good evening, everybody. I'm Tiziana Tedesco, and on behalf of Eco Canada, welcome to the great Canadian wine. This evening, we will have the opportunity to discover a selection of excellent award-winning wines of the Niagara region. The Two Sisters Vineyards is a beautiful 130-acre estate in Niagara-on-the-Lake, which I invite you to visit if you haven't done that yet. There, you will have the opportunity to sip excellent wines while enjoying a tasty meal at the on-site Italian restaurant, Kitchen 76. Here with us tonight are Angela and Melissa Marotta, CEO and General Manager at Two Sisters Vineyards and longtime members of Eco Canada, whom I would like to thank for having sponsored this event. Together with Angela and Melissa tonight is Dieter Unruh, Master Level Estate Sommelier. Dieter will walk us through the history of the winery, the basic viticultural practices, and the art of barrel aging and blending while pairing the perfect food for each featured wine. Two Sisters Vineyards wines range from complex full-bodied red to stylish white, which received numerous accolades and awards during and including Best Performing Small Winery of the Year in Canada in 2018. Their philosophy is to produce exceptional wines while staying true to varietal character and having the grapes speak for themselves. For tonight, Dieter's selection includes a Chardonnay, a Cabernet, a Cabernet Franc, and a Margot Rosé. These wines are only available at Two Sisters Vineyards in Niagara. And following this webinar, you will receive a promo code that will allow you to purchase them at a special price. Before I leave the stage to Angela and Melissa, I would like to remind you to keep following us for our upcoming classes and events. Every Tuesday until November 17, we will continue with our Tutti a Tavola cooking classes on prosciutto di Parma, alternating with the specialty of the region of Calabria. On Wednesday, November 25th, mark your calendar and join us online for our special edition of Pentola d'Oro Under the Stars, an evening dedicated to excellence in Italian cuisine and certified products with a Michelin star chef live from Italy and the winners of five exclusive awards recognizing excellence in food and wine. But now it is time for Angela and Melissa to say a few words. Thank you for being here with us tonight and um, have a great evening. Thank you all. Good evening, anyone, everyone. Uh, we'd like to welcome you virtually to Two Sisters Vineyards here in beautiful Niagara on the Lake. I want to say that we are incredibly proud members of the Italian Chamber of Commerce and we are so excited to be part of this event, the Great Canadian Wine Series, and for the opportunity for us to showcase our wines with you all. So as you probably already know, we are a family-owned winery. And yes, we are sisters and we really do get along. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. And um, just taking me back, um, our father immigrated here in 1972 from Salerno, Italy. And through hard work and determination, fast forward 35 years, he was able to bring his dream of establishing a winery here in Niagara on the Lake to fruition, literally. Um, so we came across a property uh, located now at 240 John Street, which is where the winery um, sits. And, you know, we all as a family um, had a long-term uh, vision of establishing a winery that would celebrate the enjoyment of wine and food which brings together family and growing up the memories that we have with our family was always surrounded by wine and food. It uh, brought conversation to the table and really did create uh, memorable bonds and experiences for us. So we hope that at Two Sisters we have um, you know provided this venue here for you to enjoy and bring those memories and for you to enjoy wines at your house you can create those memories together with your family through wine and wonderful food. So at this time, we'd like you to please sit back and enjoy a short video about our vineyard and our winemaking practices with Adam Pierce. And thereafter, uh, Dieter Unruh will be joining us, our Master Level Sommelier, Estate Sommelier here at Two Sisters Vineyards. Thank you, enjoy. Niagara is such a great place to grow. I mean, to start, it's diverse because we're looking for big red wines, but we also make beautiful, elegant Rieslings, Chardonnays, and we can kind of tick all those boxes. 
We get a long season, which helps build complexity. So it's not hot and fast, it's very steady. We've got a gradual rise in temperature throughout the growing season, and it creates great complexity depth to our wines. We get the growing degrees that we need to create the fruit the way we want to see it at the end of the day here. To see someone enjoying the fruits of our labors makes it all worthwhile. Hello everyone, and welcome again to the wonderful barrel room here at the Two Sisters Vineyard. It's really my pleasure to be a part of this event and guide you through some of the extraordinary wines that are being created here. It's always wonderful when the sisters have a chance to introduce me and introduce the property because their passion and their incredible love for everything that happens on this property always seems to come through. And I can certainly tell you that it comes through in the wines. So tonight we're gonna to talk a little bit about the more general view of what's happening here at Two Sisters and the activities that really set the stage for the exceptional success that we've had. And when I say success, I talk about, I'm really referring to the extraordinary wines that we're making and the reception and recognition that they're getting in the wine world. But most importantly, I'm talking about the reception that they're getting from people like you. The word of mouth that we get here at the winery is so, so unbelievable in the sense that people keep coming here and they come because of the recommendation that they get from someone that they trust. Word of mouth has been so important to the success of the winery because this is where people really learn about what we're all about. It's not a fantasy advertisement. It's not a marketing campaign. It's real. And I hope that those of you who are joining me in the tasting tonight will discover this. And for those of you who might not be enjoying our wines today, I would certainly encourage you to experience these wines firsthand in the very near future, because I believe that you will become a believer in all the great things that are happening here at Two Sisters in Nyron Lake. We're going to taste four wines tonight as kind of a cross-section of the diverse portfolio that we have. One of the reasons why Two Sisters has been so successful is because we make an outstanding portfolio of wines, not just reds, not just whites. We have rosé, we have sparkling, and we have a range of products in all the major categories to satisfy every need. And frankly, for those of us who love wine, it gives us many choices and adds to our choices something that doesn't often happen but because of the quality of the wines and just the true exceptional character of the wines they're all wines that i know many of you will enjoy and come back to time and again so across the portfolio we are going to taste a white a rosé and then two red wines i'm going to talk about each of them in succession and the chef has actually been kind enough to create some polenta for me tonight. So it's sitting here and I, I'm just gonna have to smell it a little bit because I'm gonna enjoy that a little bit later in the tasting. But just in case you're wondering what's, what's on the table in front of me here, it is our very popular polenta. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later, not just in terms of how it pairs with wine, but also the creation of the fruit itself and something that you can do and create something that is very unique. So we're going to start today with our 2018 Chardonnay. This is a wine that has received a tremendous amount of critical acclaim. It is a double gold medal winning Chardonnay. In other words, it won the gold medal as Canada's best Chardonnay. But then in a subsequent runoff of category winners, it was also selected as Canada's best white wine. It's not very often that that happens. And so once again, this is a great tribute to the quality of the wine program here at Two Sisters. Our Chardonnay program is actually based on using fruit from the oldest Chardonnay vineyard in Canada. This vineyard does not belong to us, but we do have exclusive rights to the fruit from the vineyard through a relationship with the owner of the property. That means that we are sourcing the most prized fruit in the entire country. This vineyard is 61 years old, planted in 1959, 
And that's important because as vines get older, they give us less fruit, but the fruit we do get has significantly more character, more concentration, and more complexity. So as a starting point for making great wine, there could be nothing better. What Adam Pierce, our winemaker, has managed to do with, it, with this wine really takes it to another level because in this case, it spends just about uh, seven months in a French oak barrique. And uh, if you look over my shoulder here, just beyond the large cask, you can see some of those barriques in the distance. They are 225 liters. There's about 300 bottles in each of those barrels. And that's significant because in the world of winemaking, those are small barrels. Compared to the cask that's behind me here, of course, they're very small. That just means that the wine has access to more surface area of oak in the container, and that will give us more of those beautiful oaky flavors in the wine. But Adam does want to manage that, so he only leaves this wine in the barrel for about seven months, and then after that, the wine is put back into a stainless steel tank for more evolution for about nine months before it's actually put into the bottle. So if we pour some of this wine, I have a, a series of glasses in front of me. They've all been chosen in order to really show the wine that we're going to be tasting in the best possible light. For the Chardonnay, I'm choosing a burgundy glass. And the key things to take note of here, you may not have a specific burgundy glass at home, but what we're trying to do here is have a glass with a nice big waist. That's the widest point of the glass. That's important because as we pour the wine in the glass, we get lots of surface area because of that large waist. And that means the wine is going to be more expressive. We're going to be able to smell it better because it's going to let off more of its aromatics for us to enjoy with our nose. I say nose because wine tasting is very much wine smelling. Our nose and our palate actually work together very closely in order to allow us to taste things to the highest possible level. If you take time to smell things, you will be able to taste them more acutely. If you don't smell things, your sense of taste is really muted. That's why you were always told, if you're going to have something unpleasant like medicine, you should plug your nose and take the medicine because if you can't smell it, you won't really be able to taste it. We're trying to capitalize on that principle and come at it from the other side and say, the more you smell this wine, the more you will be able to taste it. Your sense of smell is connected to your sense of taste via your brain and by a direct connection called the retronasal passage. And by inhaling the aromas of this wine, your brain is processing what it smells like and you're actually getting some of the molecules of the wine into your mouth and you're starting to taste it. This is something that is very important as we taste anything really. It's not just about wine tasting. And if you can build in some time to really pause and smell the things that you're going to drink or eat, you're going to find that your tasting experience is going to be significantly elevated. If you're smelling the Chardonnay, you're getting some beautiful aromatics of fresh fruit. This is ripe citrus, ripe apple, something like a, a beautiful Macintosh apple. Then we start to get some of the notes from the oak barrel, some wood, some smoke, some toast, because the entire inside of the barrel is charred. And so let's taste this one. But as you put it in your mouth, remember, you want to give your taste buds some time to connect with the wine. So please let the wine roll off your tongue, get onto your gums, your teeth, the inside of your cheeks, because we want to taste the wine. We also want to feel the wine. Mouthfeel and texture is really important as we taste wine. So let's just give ourselves enough time to really understand this wine when it's in our mouth. One of the really important things about this wine and what makes it so exceptional is the mouthfeel, the texture, the weight of the wine. And I'm going to come back to weight when I talk about food pairing because the weight of the wine is really important as we try to decide what the best food choices are to have with that wine. And for me, even though this is a white wine, which we tend to think of as a lighter wine style, 
it is very full and rich and has a lot of weight on my tongue and on my palate in general. It also tends to stay there for a long time. I'm still tasting this wine and I swallowed it 15 seconds ago. One of the hallmarks of a really great wine is that extended finish. How long does it actually stay in your mouth? How long can you enjoy it? This Chardonnay won those multiple gold medals because it has great flavor, it has great structure, and it also has that beautiful texture and long finish that make it unique and exceptional in the wine world. And I will tell you that certainly in the world of Chardonnay, it doesn't get too much better than this. And in the world of white wines, this is an extraordinary white wine. So as we have the opportunity to enjoy a wine like this, we start thinking about what kind of foods would we best enjoy with this wine. For me, it's very, very lovely to just enjoy on its own. It's a great lead into whatever you might be having. But every wine has a role to play in potential food pairings and when you might want to come back to this when you're creating that special dinner. So when we talk about wine and food pairing, I'm going to come back to two things. One of them I already talked about, and that is weight. And the other thing that you want to consider is intensity. So every time we're going to food and wine pair, we want to think about weight and intensity. And if we assess the weight and intensity of the wine, along with the weight and intensity of the food, we will be able to make some great matches that are going to work very well. Remember that when we put wine and food together, we never want one to overwhelm the other. We don't want the wine to overpower the food. We don't want the food to make the wine invisible. The more we can match the weight and intensity of both of them, it will increase our ability to taste the wine and food together at the same time. So we get some synergy out of the two, but we never lose any of the beautiful character of either the wine or the food. So for this Chardonnay, I think that things like salmon, if you're going to bake some salmon, some olive oil, some fresh herbs, and really intensify those flavors of the salmon, that is a perfect pairing for this Chardonnay. I think that you can use it for white meats of all kinds, but I would say chicken, even pork as an example, would have the right level of flavor, the right weight and intensity to, to match the weight and intensity of this Chardonnay. And I think just about anything with cream sauces. I really took note of the texture of this wine as I was getting that sensation on my palate. And it, it really helps me understand just how far I could take the weight of the food that I'm going to have with it. And when we talk about weight in food, remember, that's what comes primarily from things like fats. So whether it's butter or cream or just a richness in the food, that's what we're looking for to match in this wine because we already know that the wine is exceptionally opulent in that regard. So I hope that you've enjoyed that tasting of the Chardonnay. And I think that is certainly one of the best white wine choices when it comes to just about anything that you might be preparing uh, along that white or pork kind of vein of meat that you might be having with the dinner. So the next wine that we're going to have today is our rosé. And we're doing this tasting in an ascending order here. We like to start with the white wine because in the order of wines, it tends to be the least intense. And we're going to move to the most intense wines, which are the Cabernet Franc and the Cabernet Sauvignon. But before we do that, we're going to have the Margot Rosé from 2017. So this is... Uh, a wine that I think is a surprise for a lot of people. Rosé is very popular and I think the exciting part of Rosé for most people is that it is very balanced, it's very approachable, and it has enough flavor to be used for just about any food pairing situation. Because Rosé falls between whites and reds, it allows us to use it in situations where one might be just a little too light, 
the reds might be a little bit too heavy. And so we can always go to rosé. And frankly, I would say to you, rosé is a food pairing wild card. The Margot rosé from 2017 is a blend of a number of different grape varieties, carefully selected and proportioned to create a wine that is balanced, still has wonderful fruity notes, but also brings in different characters from the different grape varieties. Uh, some beautiful herbal notes from the Sauvignon Blanc, for example, some of the petrol and earthy notes from the Riesling that's in here, and of course, some of the citrus and apple notes from the Chardonnay. So if we pour this wine, once again, I'm using a burgundy glass because for me, this is still a relatively light wine, certainly not as concentrated and full flavored as the red wines. And so we want to have it in a glass that once again is going to allow the wine to express itself, to give us nice surface area, which will liberate those aromatics if you smell this wine, you immediately get a sense of the complexity. It's just bursting with different flavors. And this is one of those situations where you want to take a little bit of time and really just smell the wine because there is so much going on here. That's because it is a blend of Chardonnay, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, and then a little bit of Cabernet Franc, a red wine. And the Cabernet Franc, gives it a beautiful color, but it also provides some texture and some flavor and some weight to this wine. Masterfully crafted by Adam, the winemaker, to bring all of those things together and create that amount of complexity and flavor all in one wine. Swirling the wine is always helpful because that does help liberate some of the aromatics. We smell it, you get some red fruits from that Cabernet Franc. And, and, and for me, there's also some subtle herbal character that comes from the Cabernet Franc. I'm gonna talk about that more when we actually taste Cabernet Franc. But I think the, the layers of flavor in this wine are very enticing and very inviting. They tend to make you want to drink it. And we, we always admire wines that just by their nose, invite us to enjoy them. So let's taste this wine. Again, allowing it to stay on your tongue, you really start to get some of that great character that comes through. All those different flavors, all of the complexities of this wine start to surface. And just as an aside, it's one of the reasons why taking your time is so important. When a wine has so much to offer, unless we pause and we really pay attention to what it is that we're tasting in the wine, we're going to miss things. And as you pick out different flavors and you just take a few seconds to identify each of them, it's going to allow you to appreciate the wine more because things just keep happening on your palate. Wines with this level of quality are just going to continue to give you more information if you keep them in your mouth. And for me, uh, taking the time to really appreciate every wine that I drank was the first step in becoming a sommelier and then ultimately reaching my master level of sommelier. And your technique improves, not because any of you might wanna be a sommelier, but I will tell you that on a very personal level, and just from my own appreciation and love of the wine, taking that time and really connecting with every wine that I have the privilege to taste is one of the great joys in my life. And I hope that as you become a better taster and dedicate time to all the wines that you taste, uh, you will achieve that same level uh, of excitement and enjoyment from the wines that you have. So when we talk about rosé, as I already mentioned, this is a wine that we can use in just about any situation. And I, I think we're coming into winter now, so we're, we're cooking more, we're getting more intense flavors in the things that we create. But don't be afraid to pull a great bottle of rosé. It will work in any situation. You can use it with cold salads. You can use it with all kinds of 
pasta dishes, if you're going to do some, uh, some roasted vegetable pasta, for example, at one end of the spectrum, you could use this wine. If you're going to make a red sauce pasta, you can use this wine. It won't get lost. It has lots of flavor. I think you can take it to things like uh, white fish and white meats. It will work perfectly in those situations. And rather than me being here just telling you these things, I strongly suggest that you experiment with things. I have found that people tend to be very narrow in how they think of wine with food. And my suggestion is always experimentation. Try different things. We're all very focused on opening one bottle of wine at a time. And it's probably the most important habit that we have to break in order to do some experimentation at home. Don't be afraid to open multiple bottles. Try different things on any given night. Open a bottle of white, open a bottle of rosé, open a bottle of red, and try all three of them with the dishes that you might be preparing. It's a great way to learn for yourself and to help you understand exactly what works for you. Because in the end, whether Dieter tells you something is a great pairing or not, doesn't matter. What really matters is what you individually enjoy. And so those three bottles might be open and you might not finish them the first day you open them, but they'll still be good to drink the next day and they'll still be good to drink the day after that. And that means that for three days, you get to experiment with those wines, try different things and see which one you like better. And that's going to be a really important step in your future decision making when you're looking for wines, when you're trying to decide what you might like to have. That's going to be the kind of thing that I think is going to help you get more enjoyment out of the wine that you choose, out of the food that you choose, and most importantly, the wine and the food that you choose to have together. So the next wine we're going to taste is our 2015, pardon me, 2016 Cabernet Franc. Now Cabernet Franc is a grape variety that a lot of people recognize as a blending grape from Bordeaux. In the many centuries that it has been grown in France, it really didn't get top billing because in France, it doesn't provide the flavor profile that made it uh, a choice that a lot of people wanted to make. And so it was brought to Canada in order to survive here really because it was felt that it would be very cold hardy in the winter. And it is that, and it has stood up very well here. But we also got a pleasant surprise in that it developed a totally different flavor profile when it was grown here. Most importantly, Cabernet Franc grown in Canada has a beautiful fruit profile that is unique from where, where it was originally grown in France or pretty much anywhere else in the world. It tends to make wines here that are richer, are fuller, and they're more opulent. It also has the most extraordinary combination of flavors because of how it grows here. And that is a combination of fruit and herb and spice. And you can already tell it's a little bit savory and that's a fantastic indication again for food pairing. And I'm actually really looking forward to this polenta because that is a great food pairing with this Cabernet Franc. So now I'm moving to a very large glass. This is actually a 28 ounce glass. I'm, I'm always quick to indicate to people that this glass actually holds an entire bottle of wine. And I only tell you that because it means there's lots of room in the volume of this glass for me to swirl the wine, which with red wine is extremely important. Quickly aside, if you're going to have wine, don't be afraid to open it a couple of hours before you're going to drink it. Don't be afraid to decant red wines. Don't be afraid to decant white wines actually because all wine benefits from decanting to some extent, more so with red wines. And I think the key thing here is to let the wine breathe. As wine breathes, it becomes softer, it becomes smoother, it becomes more integrated, and you're just going to have a better tasting experience if you give the wine time to breathe. So if we swirl this wine a little bit, it's getting some air, it's also going to express itself. 
when we swirl, we actually break the surface tension of the wine in the glass, and that allows some of the aromatics to get up into the glass where we can smell them. You immediately get that beautiful black ripe fruit. It's uh, black cherries, black currants. It's ripe herbs like sweet basil and sage, a little bit of tomato leaf. For those of you who grow tomatoes, when you're working in there, you handle the plants, you rub the leaves. There's a very particular aromatic that comes off of the leaves. It's roasted red pepper, but it, it also has these uh, spicy notes coming. You can smell a little bit of red and white peppercorn. And I know that's really gonna come through on the palate after we taste this. So let's taste some of this one. All those flavors come through, really rich and delicious. The weight, again, is extraordinary. The intensity is extraordinary. So now we're moving into a wine that is really at a whole nother level from where we've been with the whites and, and the rosé. And that's just something to bear in mind because when we create food, it's important for us to remember that the flavors and the things that we put into our dishes have to have to match the wine that we're going to choose. And this is that perfect opportunity to have a white, a rosé, and a red. And pair it something, I don't know how much of a view I can give you of this incredible polenta, uh, that when you create a dish, you want to be able to do some pairing, do some experimentation, and really understand what's going on in the food so that, again, it works perfectly with the wine that we're going to create. This polenta, for me, is, is a wonderful combination of the ingredients and the cooking style. Because when we say polenta, and I'm sure I wanted to show you this because I'm sure many of you think polenta, that doesn't look like polenta, right? Because we, we see polenta serve more as a side dish, maybe it looks a little more like uh, the carbohydrate on the plate. But I think in this case, by shaping the polenta and deep frying the polenta, We've created a crust on the polenta itself. So it's got a creamy center, but it has a crusty exterior. And then we finished it with some tomato sauce, some fresh herb, and some grated Parmesan cheese. So it goes way beyond what we might expect from polenta. And frankly, I've waited long enough, so I've got to enjoy some of this polenta now. I, I want to get all those elements. I want the creamy center. I want the tomato sauce. I want the Parmesan cheese that's grated on the top because that's going to give it this combination of flavors that's going to make it truly exceptional. Incredible flavors just bursting on the palate. A lot of intensity here. The acidity of the tomato sauce, brilliant against the richness of the polenta itself. That, that crust that comes from deep frying gives us a totally different texture. And it isn't like polenta at all, which is the really fascinating thing. You've created an entirely different element on the plate just by the way you cooked one of the ingredients. And this is obviously one of the joys of cooking and creating great dishes. But what you've done here now is created a wine pairing challenge. And when we originally paired this wine with Cabernet Franc, it seemed like a reach because on the surface you say polenta and Cabernet Franc, no, that doesn't go together at all. And yet, when you create a dish like this, where it's polenta creamy, it's polenta deep fried, it's the tomato sauce, it's the Parmesan cheese, it's the notes of the fresh herbs, then all of a sudden you need a wine that's as big and rich and complicated as this Cabernet Franc. Other pairing opportunities here are, are almost unlimited because this is a great wine for strong flavors. Game meats, think about something like Saddle of Rabbit. Uh, it also works extremely well with uh, just about anything that you're going to make on the barbecue because grilling intensifies flavor. And just like we saw here with the deep frying of the polenta, you're going to get some incredible flavor development that demands a wine that both has enough flavor and intensity to keep up with what you put on the grill, but also has the right flavors to pair with whatever you're going to make. So to finish off tonight, 
we're going to taste our Cabernet Sauvignon from 2015. And here at the winery, we're always a year behind on Cabernet Sauvignon because it really needs more time. Cabernet Sauvignon is the last grape that we harvest every year. It is a very small grape, has a very thick skin, and it's that skin that we're trying to ripen when we leave it on the vine. So Cabernet Sauvignon is usually harvested late in November. In fact, last year during 2019, we got caught because you may recall that there was a, an early snowstorm last year. Well, we still had Cabernet Sauvignon on the vines out there and it became a scramble and all hands on deck to go out there and harvest Cabernet Sauvignon in the snow in order to get it in. And we do that because in order to make great Cabernet Sauvignon, it has to have time to ripen, especially in a cool climate like we have here in, in Southern Ontario. So the hang time, letting it be out there, it, getting whatever sunshine and temperature we can late in the year is going to help those thick skins ripen. It's going to help the tannins in the wine soften, and that's going to help the wine achieve the incredible flavor and complexity that Cabernet Sauvignon is capable of. Many people consider Cabernet Sauvignon the greatest wine grape in the world. It is the backbone of the wines from Bordeaux. It's the backbone of the grape wines from California. And we believe it is the backbone of the great potential that we have here in Niagara. We at Two Sisters feel like we're achieving that potential by using this Cabernet Sauvignon, not just for single varietal wines like the one we're tasting now, but also in some of the great blends that we make here on the property, either our 11th Post or our most extraordinary Stone Eagle wines, which are also available on our website. So let's, let's smell this Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm a lover of Cabernet Sauvignon. I collect them in my own cellar. There's nothing like Cabernet Sauvignon. It's the least fruity of the red grape varieties. And you get that right away here. There is some fruit, but you start to get all of the other notes that Cabernet Sauvignon is so famous for. And I'm getting things like leather and tobacco. And it's the tobacco for those of you who may have ever had the opportunity to go to tobacco country uh, in, in Southwestern Ontario, when they pick the big tobacco leaves and they hang them in the drying sheds. And as they dried, there were these incredible earthy notes that were in the air, both in the shed and everywhere you went. That's the kind of tobacco that I'm talking about here. It's like falling leaves in the fall. It's like walking through the forest. It's, it's this most incredible, earthy, delicious, inviting, natural smell. Now, if we taste this wine, All of that comes through. It really tastes the way it smells. The thing about Cabernet Sauvignon is the intensity because it is very concentrated. It has a lot of tannin. Those thick skins that I talked about earlier, they translate into some really, really intense and heavy structure in this one. Really sticks to my tongue, hangs around for a long time. It's on my gums, it's on my teeth. I can feel it on the inside of my cheeks. So it lasts a long time. And again, even though I'm talking about it as I'm tasting it, I'm still getting it. And I, I get it in the front of my mouth, the back of my mouth. It's really there. And it is a wine that will just linger on your palate. And that's fantastic because it means that on its own, it's very enjoyable. As a food pairing wine, this is where you can pull out the stops and use it for the most intense of the dishes that you're going to make long cooking styles, things like casseroles mm -hmm. and stews and situations where you're really intensifying the flavors. Don't be afraid to use it for that perfectly cooked steak, maybe just some, some uh, grated peppercorns on there um, to add a little bit of flavor, but this is an ideal companion for red meat protein. So it is unique in its flavor and its character, but it's also unique in its food pairing capabilities. So don't overlook Cabernet Sauvignon when you're planning that really special dinner. So at this point, 
I would like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have regarding the wines that we've tasted tonight or the winery itself. Well, thank you so much, Dieter. This was a very informative presentation and lots of details. It was very, very interesting. So thank you very much. I invite all the audience to send more questions through the chat. But here I have some for you. And uh, the first one that I wanted to ask you is why Cabernet Franc typ um, is Cabernet Franc typically a blending grape in many regions? Yeah, um, the, the characteristics of Cabernet Franc that make it such a great blending grape are really two. Uh, one is the fact that it has a lot of color. So when winemakers are looking to create a blend, they obviously want the color of the wine to be very inviting. And because Cabernet Franc uh, does have a lot of pigment in its skins, it is a, a grape that can really contribute that to a blend. The other thing about it is the, the flavor profile that I talked about. It does tend to add a lot of flavor. It's quite intense and it has some very unique flavors to add. It's fruity, it's herbal, and it's spicy all at the same time. And when winemakers are trying to take a grape that might be uh, a, not expressing itself to quite the level that they're happy with, and that's something that frequently happens with Merlot, for example. Merlot tends to be somewhat simplistic as a wine sometimes. So winemakers like to add Cabernet Franc just to add character and complexity. That actually is what is done in the very famous region of saint emilie aux in Bordeaux in France, where they blend Cabernet Franc into Merlot just to add that character, color, and complexity to the wines. Thank you. Um, we have a question here in the chat that says, if you decant, will the wine warm up? Yeah, this is always a concern. And the question, of course, is, you know, I'm going to decant the wine, will it get too warm? Uh, we can do things to make sure that the wine doesn't become too warm. And we want to make sure that the wine is always at least a little bit below room temperature. We want to keep the wine cool. So I always suggest to people that refrigerating your red wine is not necessarily a bad idea because it means you start with a temperature that's a little bit lower. And so as you take the wine out and now you decant it and you let the decanter sit on your dining room table or whatever the case might be, the wine will warm up to the point where it has the right temperature to, to be enjoyed to the highest possible level. For me personally, if I open a bottle of red wine and I don't finish it, uh, I always put it in the refrigerator because it will last better. It's, it's better to keep the wine cold. Now I seal it, I pump the air out of it, I do everything, but I also want to preserve the wine. But now I have cold wine. So the next day when I'm going to drink it, I have to let it warm up. It's just something that you have to remember and you want to be ahead of the game enough to say, oh, I'm going to have some of that wine later. So now I get out the cold wine, I pour it in my glass uh, half an hour before I'm going to drink it so that by the time I'm going to drink it, it is ready to drink and at room temperature. Great. That's great. So another question we have is, is the winery open this weekend? We would like to have lunch or dinner. So there you go. You have some customers. Yeah. Uh, yes. So the, the winery is open every day. We're open year round and we're open every day. So it is, uh, it's always an option for you to find your way down here to Two Sisters. Our restaurant is open from Thursday to Sunday for lunch and dinner. So it is, uh, it, it's open four days. And, and again, that's uh, given the circumstances and uh, things we have to do right now, just to, just to sort of deal with COVID and everything else. Uh, the restaurant is, is only open four days, but yes, we are open this weekend. And yes, Perfect. we would love to see any of our viewers today uh, join us here at the winery because you will certainly have an incredible experience. That's great. And where can we order the wines from? Where do you ship to? Yeah, so the, the wines are available on our website. For those of you who might be visiting the winery, of course, you can pick them up while you're here. 
but I, I will talk about this a little bit because you have a couple of options. Uh, first of all, I would encourage everyone to go to our website and it is sort of the best connection to two sisters from far away. It's a great reflection of everything that's happening here. It has full details of what's available in terms of the wine portfolio. It's also the portal for you to order. I would suggest that you sign up for our newsletter while you're on the website, because that means that we will send you updates and news releases that are of importance when we have wines coming up, when menu changes happen in the restaurant, uh, exciting things that are going on here at the winery. We want you to be a part of all those things. We're very judicious about how many emails we send out. So don't worry about that. We will, we will carefully manage how much communication you get, but it's an important link to the winery. We have an extraordinary wine club that people may want to take a look at. Remember that Two Sister Wines are not available in the LCBO. Either the winery or ordering from our website are the only way that you can get these wines. And for a lot of people, the wine club is a great option to do that. The details are on the website as well. And so that's your opportunity to get our wines on a regular basis at frankly uh, a great price, but also insider access because I always say this, the sisters and the family treat our wine club members like family and we welcome them with open arms. They get special access. They get special wines that nobody else gets. Um, so they're really being treated very specially. And I would strongly suggest you at least look at that. And then for purchasing the wine or purchasing more of the wine that you've had tonight, there is a promo code that's available to you. And that will get everyone a discount when they order wine from the website. And that promo code is I-C-C-O-T-S-V. So again, I-C-C-O-T-S-V. Just put that in the promo code box and you will get a discount on your order on the website. We'll make sure we uh, will communicate and we'll confirm it with all our attendees tonight. So yeah. that's great. Thank you so much. Um, I guess one last question before uh, we um, uh, pass the, uh, we go back to Melissa and Angela. What are the different ways that you can make rosé? Uh, yes, well, as I mentioned, rosé is very popular these days. And there are actually three ways to make rosé. One is blending of red and white wines. And that's what we talked about with our Margot. It gives the winemaker the opportunity to install a lot of different flavors and add some complexity. Another way to make rosé is to bleed juice off early in the red wine making process. And at that point, because the wine hasn't had a lot of skin contact, it's still pink. And so we get a rosé wine at that point. And the third way is to do an early harvest of red grapes, limit the amount of skin contact and get a, a pink wine in that way. And that's another way that we make rosé here at the winery. Those rosé wines are also available on our website. Great. Okay, I think we have time for one little, one little quick question. Uh, of the wines that you showcased tonight, you presented, um, which one would you pair with aged cheese and which one with fresh cheese? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. And, and so I think um, aged cheese for me tends to get more flavorful and saltier. So the, the two red wines that I had, the Cabernet Franc and the Cabernet Sauvignon are great choices for old, intensely flavored cheeses. Uh, when you talk about young cheeses, they're less intense and they, they have less weight to them. They're not as, as full and rich. So that's when we have to pick lighter wines. Uh, I think the Rosé would still be a great choice for younger cheeses. Uh, other lighter wines, uh, Riesling, for example, uh, our Riesling won the gold medal as best Riesling in Canada at the All Canadian Wine Championships. It's a fantastic cheese wine and for me is a perfect pairing for younger cheeses. Perfect. Um, I think one, one more question. Can you just uh, summarize, you, you mentioned the different type of glasses 
and um, why they are different. But uh, can you just uh, say quickly um, again, uh, how does the glass affect how the wine tastes? Yeah, so, um, you know, the, it, it's a large topic because we've got so much going on between the wine and our senses. But in very quick general terms, when we deal with less intense wines, um, we're, we're using wine glasses that are bigger in order to allow us to connect with those wines better. When we taste wines that are more intense, and for example, I would cite wines like the, the aromatic varieties, and that's wines like Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling. Uh, those wines are very expressive, so then we use smaller glasses, smaller waist, smaller surface area, smaller opening. As we move through things like uh, delicate wines like the Rosé and the Chardonnay, we increase the waist of the glass, more surface area, more aromatics coming off the wine, lots of opportunity for us to get our nose into the glass and taste the wine. And as we move to the, the boldest, fullest wines, we still want lots of surface area so that we can really understand all the complexities of those wines. We like a nice taper on the glass so those aromatics are being captured and we've got a nice big opening at the top of the glass so we can still get our nose in as we drink the wine. That's great. Well, thank you so much um, uh, for, for all the details and the information that you gave us. It was very interesting. I think um, it would, it's time uh, now to go back to Melissa and Angela. Um, we're going to say a few words uh, before wrapping There's always up. something to learn about wines. So as, you know, being the he spoke so um, highly about each of the wines, we do want to share our favorites. So for myself, it's a very personal favorite because it's finally a wine that I can enjoy with my daughter, who's now almost 20 years old, my oldest one. Her name is Simona. And that is the rosé. So I think the rosé in itself is a great entry level into, you know, understanding wine and starting to appreciate and savor wines. So it's an easy transition into the big bold reds or the big bold whites. So it's finally wine that I get to enjoy with my daughter and um, that's very special to me. Mm -hmm. So I always like to say whenever we're asked what our favorite wines are, it's, it's very tough to answer because we, it's like picking a favorite child, which <laughs> I love all my children the same, I love all my wines the same, but I really truly enjoy our Merlot. Um, I often compare it to Sophia Loren. <laughs> so very, very sexy. It's a very sexy, lush wine, very beautiful velvety mouthfeel, high, um, uh, you know, rich, dark fruit, blueberries. Again, it's very velvety, very floral. So that's that's kind of my my go-to person, especially our, our 216 Merlot, which is drinking uh, absolutely beautifully right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all our wines are meant to pair with food, as Dieter had mentioned. So the restaurant that we have um, at the Winery Kitchen 76, a lot of the items are, or, or the, the, the menu creations are made to pair with the wines and not the other way around. So uh, there are beautiful dishes that will pair perfectly with the Cabernet Franc because of a certain herb that's there, or the um, Chardonnay because of a certain cheese. So those are all things that are very important to us because when you come here, it is very much wine focused. So at this time, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us. It really, truly means a lot for us. Um, and, and again, thank you. And I hope you, you got a lot out of uh, this evening and the education that Dieter so beautifully expresses. And right now, we would uh, like to hand it over to Tiziana for the closing remarks. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you so much, Angela and Melissa. And thank you very much, Dieter, for this exciting online experience and class. It was very, very interesting. A special thank you goes to our sponsor, the Two Sisters Vineyards, and of course to Angela and Melissa. So we'd like to thank you also all the attendees, and remember to get your promo code. Uh, it was just uh, uh, posted on the on the chat uh, to purchase the Two Sister Vineyards wine. Um, I would like, on behalf of Eco Canada, our uh, board of directors and uh, our executive director, Corrado Paina. Uh, and from all our staff, from Mary, Ilaria, Isabella, Astrid, Richard, Marisa, and Monica, uh, a big thank you for joining us. Thank you to the Two Sister Vineyards, and have a great evening, and cheers. Thank you so much. <laughs>